Chapter 9 In the enormous whale belly of steel and stone, carved out to form the long enduring old opera house, Rick Deckard found an echoing, noisy, slightly miscontrived rehearsal taking place. As he entered, he recognised the music. Mozart's The Magic Flute. The first act in its final scenes. The Moor's slaves, in other words, the chorus, had taken up their song a bar too soon, and this had nullified the simple rhythm of the magic bells. What a pleasure. He loved the magic flute. He seated himself in a dress circle seat. No one appeared to notice him and made himself comfortable. Now Papagino and his fantastic pelt of bird feathers had joined Pamina to sing words which always brought tears to Rick's eyes when and if he happened to think about it. Könnte jeder brave Mann solche Glöckchen finden, seine Feinde würden dann ohne Mühe schwinden. Well, Rick thought, in real life no such magic bells exist that make your enemy effortlessly disappear. Too bad. And Mozart, not long after writing the magic flute, had died in his thirties of kidney disease and had been buried in an unmarked pauper's grave. Thinking this, he wondered if Mozart had had any intuition that the future did not exist, that he had already used up his little time. Maybe I have too, Rick thought as he watched the rehearsal move along. This rehearsal will end, the performance will end, the singers will die, eventually the last score of the music will be destroyed in one way or another. Finally the name Mozart will vanish, the dust will have won. If not on this planet, then another. We can evade it a while as the Andes can evade me and exist a finite stretch longer. But I get them, or some other bounty hunter gets them. In a way, he realised, I'm part of the form-destroying process of entropy. The Rosen Association creates, and I unmake. Or anyhow, so it must seem to them. On the stage, Papagino and Pamina engaged in a dialogue. He stopped his introspection to listen. Papagino, my child, what should we now say? Pamina, the truth, that's what we will say. Leaning forward and peering, Rick studied Pamina in her heavy, convoluted robes with her wimple trailing its veil about her shoulders and face. He re-examined the poop sheet, then leaned back satisfied. I've now seen my third Nexus 6 android, he realised. This is Lou Beloved. A little ironic, the sentiment her role calls for. However vital, active and nice looking, an escaped android could hardly tell the truth about itself anyhow. On the stage, Luba Luft sang and he found himself surprised at the quality of her voice. It rated with that of the best, even that of notables in his collection of historic tapes. The Rosen Association built her well, he had to admit. And again, he perceived himself subspecie aeternitatis, 
the form destroyer called forth by what he heard and saw here. Perhaps the better she functions, the better a singer she is, the more I am needed. If the androids had remained substandard, like the ancient Q40s made by Derain Associates, there would be no problem and no need of my skill. I wonder when I should do it, he asked himself. As soon as possible, probably. At the end of the rehearsal when she goes to her dressing room. At the end of the act, the rehearsal ended temporarily. It would resume, the conductor said in English, French and German, in an hour and a half. The conductor then departed. The musicians left their instruments and also left. Getting to his feet, Rick made his way backstage to the dressing rooms. He followed the tail end of the cast, taking his time and thinking. It's better this way, getting it immediately over with. I'll spend a short time talking to her and testing her as possible. As soon as I'm sure, but technically, he could not be sure until after the test. Maybe Dave guessed wrong on her. He conjectured. I hope so. But he doubted it. Already, instinctively, his professional sense had responded. And he had yet to err throughout years with the department. Stopping a super, he asked for Miss Luff's dressing room. The super wearing makeup and the costume of an Egyptian spear carrier pointed. Rick arrived at the indicated door, saw an ink written note tacked to it reading Miss Luft, private, and knocked. Come in, he entered. The girl sat at her dressing table. A much-handled, cloth-bound score opened on her knees, marking here and there with a ballpoint pen. She still wore her costume and makeup, except for the wimple. That she had set down on its rack. Yes, she said, looking up. The stage makeup enlarged her eyes. Enormous and hazel, they fixed on him and did not waver. I am busy, as you can see. Her English contained no remnant of an accent. Rick said, You compare favourably to Schwarzkopf. Who are you? Her tone held cold reserve and that other cold which he had encountered in so many androids. Always the same. Great intellect. Ability to accomplish much. But also this. He deplored it. And yet without it, he could not track them down. I'm from the San Francisco Police Department, he said. Oh. The huge and intense eyes did not flicker. Did not respond. What are you here about? Her tone oddly seemed gracious. Seating himself in a nearby chair, he unzipped his briefcase. I have been sent here to administer a standard personality profile test to you. It won't take more than a few minutes. Is it necessary? She gestured toward the big cloth-bound score. I have a good deal I must do. Now she had begun to look apprehensive. It's necessary. He got out the Voigt Kampf instruments, began setting them up. An IQ test? No, empathy. I'll have to put on my glasses. She reached to open a drawer of her dressing table. You can mark the score without your glasses. You can take this test. I'll show you some pictures and ask you several questions. Meanwhile, he got up and walked to her and, bending, pressed the adhesive pad of sensitive grids 
against her deeply tinted cheek. And this light, he said, adjusting the angle of the pencil beam. And that's it. Do you think I'm an android? Is that it? Her voice had faded almost to extinction. I'm not an android. I haven't even been on Mars. I've never even seen an android. Her elongated lashes shuddered involuntarily. He saw her trying to appear calm. Do you have information that there's an android in the cast? I'd be glad to help you. And if I were an android, would I be glad to help you? An android, he said, doesn't care what happens to another android. That's one of the indications we look for. Then, Miss Luft said, you must be an android. That stopped him. He stared at her. Because, she continued, your job is to kill them, isn't it? You're what they call, she tried to remember. A bounty hunter, Rick said, but I'm not an android. This test you want to give me, her voice now had begun to return. Have you taken it? Yes, he nodded, a long, long time ago, when I first started with the department. Maybe that's a false memory. Don't androids sometimes go around with false memories? Rick said. My superiors know about the test, it's mandatory. Maybe there was once a human who looked like you. And somewhere along the line you killed him and took his place. And your superiors don't know. She smiled as if inviting him to agree. Let's get on with the test, he said, getting out the sheets of questions. I'll take the test, Lubeluft said. If you take it first. Again he stared at her, stopped in his tracks. Wouldn't that be more fair? she asked. Then I could be sure of you. I don't know. You seem so peculiar and hard and strange. She shivered, then smiled again. Hopefully. You wouldn't be able to administer the Voigt Kampf test. It takes considerable experience. Now please listen carefully. These questions will deal with social situations which you might find yourself in. What I want from you is a statement of response, what you do, and I want the response as quickly as you can give it. One of the factors I'll record is the time lag, if any. He selected his initial question. You're sitting watching TV and suddenly you discover a wasp crawling on your wrist. He checked with his watch counting the seconds and checked two with the twin dials. What's a wasp? Lubeluft asked. A stinging bug that flies. Oh, how strange. Her immense eyes widened with childlike acceptance, as if he had revealed the cardinal mystery of creation. Do they still exist? I've never seen one. 